1999, the revival era of Scooby-Doo began with Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island. It came with a graphics makeover, though it did feel and look much like Scooby-Doo that we remembered from the Where Are You days, from the new Scooby-Doo movies days, the 13 Ghosts days, the Richard Shaggy era, all of that, that, that good Scooby-Doo era, the revival brought that back with Zombie Island. And then 20 years from that period, somebody to, had the idea to say, what if we came back to Zombie Island? What if we finally made a sequel to Zombie Island? And so, they make Scooby-Doo return to Zombie Island. And before I get any further covering into this, I do have to make a correction to a previous video that I made. With my rant on the Curse of the Thirteenth Ghost in my rage, I might have said that this movie came out before Curse of the Thirteenth Ghost. This is simply not correct. This came out after Curse of the Thirteenth Ghost. In fact, it is a direct sequel to Curse of the Thirteenth Ghost. Yes, that's right. It is a direct sequel to Curse of the Thirteenth Ghost, which means to imply that the timeline, the, the Scooby-Doo timeline in this ver film verse is where are you? Maybe Scooby and Scrappy Doo, the Thirteenth Ghost of Scooby Doo, Zombie Island, the Curse of the Thirteenth Ghost, and then finally return to Zombie Island. So what this all entails and means is, Zombie Island retroactively is a sequel to the Thirteen Ghosts of Scooby-Doo, entailing that the monsters have been real, and that Shaggy and Scooby and Daphne have encountered real spooky creatures and zombies and ghosts and ghouls and goblins and, zo and werewolves and, and vampires and, and all of that stuff. They encountered all of that throughout the Redshirt Shaggy era, the whole Redshirt Shaggy era was about the things being real. Now, naturally, Fred and Velma weren't there to see it, but Daphne, Shaggy, and Scooby were there to see it. That was the whole point of the Red Shirt Shaggy era. But th the reason why I'm bringing this up is that this covers storylines, plot points, that the Curse of the Thirteen Ghost started. In Curse of the Thirteen Ghost, it opens with the gang trying to solve a mystery, and they end up bagging the wrong guy, so as to say. And then this cop dude comes in, who I'm going to nickname as Sheriff Rogers, because it's my headcanon that that guy's probably Shaggy's dad. Mainly because, in a pup named Scooby-Doo, Shaggy's dad is a cop. So I'm, it's just my headcanon. So that's who this cop is in, in Curse of the Turntine Ghost and Return to Zombie Island. Right? Good. Going. I'm moving on. So this co this cop guy says that you guys are 17, you're almost 18. If we ga we catch you doing this crap, and one of the people you accidentally bag decides to press charges, I can't protect you anymore. And so the cop says tells them to to retire the Scooby Doo business, the Mystery Incorporated stuff. He tells them to retire, and then they go off on their 13 Ghost adventure and Curse of the 13 Ghost, and then we come into this one. We open this film with Fred having a fantasy of still having the mystery machine because he sold the mystery machine to Curse of the Thirteen Ghosts. This is what I'm saying. This is a direct sequel to Curse of the Thirteen Ghosts. Yes, it is a direct sequel to both Zombie Island and Curse of the Thirteen Ghosts. And I, I have to just keep, keep it to the facts. Don't rant. Okay, okay. So Fred's whole character is that he loves the mystery machine, which I assumed is actually Shaggy's fan to begin with, but whatever. So Fred is all about that mystery machine. They've 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 done this with previous films like uh, Frank and Creepy. Uh, Fred is obsessed with the mystery machine. He, he he loves the car, and I'm glad that they're experimenting with Fred. They're giving him ideas. They're giving him things to do, and we don't care. <laughs> so long as he's a lovable dork, he's always going to be a lovable dork. So, Fred is obsessed with the van, and he sold it in the previous movie. So, now he's missing the van. 
And then Shaggy and Scooby make Fred, Daphne, Thelma make a promise to quit the mystery business for good. And then almost immediately after, there's a TV show going on that Shaggy's watching in the malt shop. And he has won an all-expenses-paid trip to a vacation to a private island for vacation tropical fun or whatever. And Fred, Daphne, and Thelma are naturally suspicious about this, but they have made a promise not to do mystery stuff. So they go to the island, and it's clearly Moonscar Island from Zombie Island. And everybody who's watched a Zombie Island knows exactly what this is, and of course, naturally, we know the title. If it's called Return to Zombie Island, I don't think they're going to the Himalayas. So they go to Zombie Island again, Moonscar Island. It's called Moonstar Island now. So naturally, Fred um, is a little bit suspicious about that. Velma is very much caring, cover, c continuing the character that she had in the previous movie, Curse of the Thirteenth Ghost. And Velma's character in that previous movie was all about debunking everything supernatural. Sh 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 so, <laughs> so she's here to debunk this unsolved mystery. Naturally, anything that was supernatural supernatural that they ended the film without proving that it wasn't supernatural Velma has basically called it an unsolved case he has put she has a blog of unsolved cases and apparently a film producer film director saw Velma's book of unsolved cases on her blog and decided to buy the Moonstar Island and Moonscar Island and, and rename the resort and all that stuff to, to, to lure the mystery gang into the island to shoot a found footage horror movie with the zombies. And naturally, I don't know why they keep doing this, but the zombies end up being fake. You know, it's all, it's like they ended up, it's all being fake, and then the mystery crew end up realizing after Shaggy and Scooby give them permission to do mysteries again. They, Velma immediately realizes they're on the set of a TV show. They've been lured here for a TV show. The zombies are actors. The, the, the innkeeper is actually a film director, and blah, 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 frickety blah. So the cat people end up showing up, and they end up running around fleeing from the cat people. It's mostly about the cat people. This movie is mainly about the werecats from Zombie Island. The zombies are just part of the first act, and they end up being fake. So the second act throughout the third act is all about the werecats. And Fred does have a delightful subplot with the mystery machine for a prop they end up remaking the mystery machine into a monster truck, and Fred just falls in love with this vehicle, and it's just a delight to see him fr gushing over this mystery machine thing. This whole mystery machine subplot in these two movies, I honestly... I, I liked it. <laughs> I really did. I really liked it. It was charming. It was funny. Yeah, Fred's a good guy. He's, he's fine in these... Velma's fine, Daphne's fine. No, Daphne kind of feels... You know, if this is a direct sequel to Curse of the Thirteenth Ghost, Daphne is supposed to be an incredibly competent super buffy, basically. Because in Curse of the Thirteenth Ghost, Daphne is basically super buffy. She's all about martial arts and all sorts of hang gliding and car maneuverabilities and stuff. And she's back to basically being basic Daphne in this. And I'm like, where did that character you used to be in the previous movie go? This is a direct sequel to that! <laughs> well, whatever. So, they don't mention uh, the 13 Ghosts at all in this movie. They only mention plots that are unrelated to the 13 Ghosts in this movie. But that's how we know it's a direct sequel, okay? So that... I don't know. Let me see what else I could talk about here. Um, the Werecats end up being fake as well. Because we saw at the end of the Zombie Island that the Werecats turned to dust. Because the curse failed and whatever. Um, these werecats ended up being people in masks because they were trying to scare everybody off the island while they searched for Moonscar's treasure. And I guess that's a decent reason to come back to the island. We never found Moonscar's treasure in the first movie, so I guess coming back to find that was a, a good enough reason. So they brought back the zombie island lore and the legend and the, the, the werecats mainly to scare people off the island so these guys could search for Moonscar's treasure. The mystery gang end up finding Moonscar's treasure. 
However, there is something that remains unsolved. In the, throughout the movie, we do not see one, we do not see two, we do not see three, we see four werecats. And they end up capturing three of them, and they end up being guys in masks. There was a fourth werecat that they never capture, they never try to capture, they leave it an unsolved mystery. They don't, and they end up saying, oh, we've solved them. No, you didn't. That other guy is still out there. And it's like, if this movie feels like a complete colossal waste of time to me. And I, I like Fred's subplot. It's, it's, it's a delight. It's worth the, the watch for Fred's subplot alone. The rest of the movie, the whole shooting the zombies, the fake zombies, the fake werecats, searching for Moonscar's treasure, there's a reason why I ended up forgetting this movie almost entirely, because I had watched it before back in, back when it first came out. The, the year's not on the back here, but it's not that old. Curse of the Thirteenth Ghost came out in 2019, so I guess this is 2020, right? So a couple years, and I completely forgot the movie. I mean everything. Everything about this movie. I did not remember anything. In plenty of Scooby-Doo movies I've only seen once on cable television I remembered more about. So there was, there had to be something with this movie, right? So I had to rewatch it. I had to rewatch it to figure out what's going on here, right? Because the two sequels to, to these, these two movies were sequels. They didn't often do that with these direct to, to, to DVD, direct to video Scooby movies. They didn't often tend to make sequels to previous things. They just made their own stuff, so as to say. They might have returning characters like in Chill Out Scooby Doo Dead from Scooby-Doo and the Loch Ness Monster returned as a character. And Scooby-Doo Legend of the Vampire, the Hex Girls returned, right? The Hex Girls are recurring characters. They, you might have a recurring character, but it, it, it's not necessarily a sequel to a previous thing, if that makes sense. So, this is a direct sequel to Curse of the Thirteenth Ghost, and is also a sequel to Zombie Island. Curse of the Thirteenth Ghost is a sequel to the Thirteen Ghosts of Scooby-Doo. There are plot points that both of these properties completely drop. While this film does have some of those supernatural elements, like the fourth werecat that they never capture, it is alluded to in the story that this is a real werecat. This might actually be the cat god that Simone and Lena ended up praying to to become werecats. You know, this might actually be that actual original werecat dude, right? This guy might be the guy who bites people and passes on the virus or whatever. You know, like vampires or werewolves. See, this guy, the werecat may be, you know, so it does allude to the supernatural stuff actually still being there, even though it's not actually a main focus of the movie. The zombies are fake, the werecats that you do see throughout the most of the film are fake, the fourth werecat is real, they never capture him, they never solve that mystery. So that just makes me wonder. Most of the if not all of the supernatural stuff in Curse of the Thirteenth Ghost, Velma ended up debunking. The only thing that we never had Velma debunk was the actual chest of demons that she didn't open at the end of the movie, deciding to leave that up in the air as to whether or not that was real or not. And they ended up um, making Vincent Van Gogh's magic. They said that he's probably going through a spell block. He can't cast magic for some reason. And um, Boogle and Weird, the two recurring ghosts from the 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo, they were nowhere to be found. You'd think they would become servants of the 13th Ghost, as they always tend to do with every previous ghost. They would become servants of that ghost. For example, in the Time Slime episode, they became servants of Time Slime. Yada, 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 yada. And then we have the timeline. What the heck is going on with time? This film is basically saying that Zombie Island is canon. Curse of the Thirteenth Ghost is canon. Canon. Uh, the Thirteen Ghosts of Scooby-Doo is canon. And both of those properties all say that Where Are You is canon. So the Where Are You show is canon. So all of these properties end up being canon to these, these films, and yet we have to wonder what the timeline is actually supposed to look like. 
Now they could, the, the, they end up trying to debu- trying to answer some of those questions. In this film, Daphne says that she got a summer position as a journalist on the TV show that we saw her doing in Zombie Island. So we're wondering if that's just a summer thing that she did, and that Shaggy and Scooby being contraband guards at the airport was just their summer gig after Mystery Incorporated quit for that year. And then we begin to wonder how old these guys are. They were clearly college age at Zombie Island, and then they get de-aged after Cyber Chase, because that was the, the original team. The original team that did the revival era, the first four movies, after Cyber Chase, I believe the fifth movie movie was Legend of the Vampire, and they go back to the original art style that Where Are You, Scooby-Doo showed, but that ended up making us wonder about how old they were, because they now looked de-aged in these original outfits. So, we're wondering about that, and then we're looking at this, and then we're looking at, oh, the 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo happened, so that must have happened while they were off on a summer break, so now we have two summer breaks that, 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 that end up happening here. In one of the summer breaks, Fred and Velma went to summer camp, and Daphne, Shaggy, and Scooby went to the Himalayas to do the 13 Ghosts thing. And then in one of the other summer breaks, Daphne became a reporter, Fred became her producer, Shaggy and Scooby became contraband airport security, and Velma opened up a mystery bookshop. So we have at least two years here. So we want. Then we have to wonder how long ago was Where Are You? Shaggy still had a, had scruffle on his chin during Where Are You? And then they're told, and then we're told that they're 17 years old and cursed to the 13th ghost. So I started getting facial hair when I was 15. So maybe they were 15 at the start of Where Are You? But then you had to get your driver's license at 16. So Fred had to be at least 16 to do that and learners at 16 and, and, and it, uh, it's falling apart it's all falling apart it's almost like you shouldn't have made these sequels you shouldn't have tried to do this like this oh goodness gracious oh man and it's also Scooby-Doo, so you shouldn't be thinking about it too deeply. Kids aren't going to be thinking too deeply about it. They're not going to care. And the only reason I care is because I loved the 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo, and the Curse of the 13 Ghost was not a faithful remake. And while that Rant Files video was all about me ranting about that movie, it was fine. It's a very watchable movie. If you had never seen the 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo before, and you watched Curse of the Thirteenth Ghost, you would end up probably liking it. The only reason you may not like it is if you did watch Thirteen Ghosts of Scooby-Doo, because the supernatural stuff gets yanked out of the movie. In this, they do keep the supernatural elements in there, but Velma thinks that it's just unsolved stuff that she never figured out. So the supernatural stuff might not have been so super at all, and might just have been natural unsolvedness. Whatever. Zombie Return to Zombie Island feels like they tried to be a little bit faithful. They learned a few things from Curse of the Thirteen Ghosts, and they realized maybe we should bring some supernatural elements back in, and maybe we shouldn't try to debunk all of it. So they tried to do a little, some nice things with this movie, though the art style is still with the original Where Are You art design. It clearly looks like something that is completely removed from the revival era, though it looks like it could belong in the Where Are You era. It's just a lot of things that, that, that a huge chunk of time just cannot repair. The 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo and Curse of the 13 Ghosts are just as disjointed as Zombie Island and Return to Zombie Island are. Although, Return to Zombie Island is a nice sequel to Curse of the 13 Ghosts. These two movies have plot points. Curse of the 13 Ghosts has opened some side plots, like Fred and the Mystery Machine, and um, the cop dude that I had canon as Shaggy's dad, and they end up returning, those subplots end up returning for this movie. So it's it's charming in its own way. 
it's just when you try to take these two movies and connect them to the things that they're claiming to be sequels to and then you try to connect zombie island to 13 ghosts which actually actually might actually fit pretty nicely um because we already established in 13 ghosts of Sue we do that all the supernatural stuff is real so when we see zombies it doesn't surprise us as much in the red shirt shaggy era that was the whole shtick it's just fred and velma who never saw this stuff though daphne should not be surprised in the slightest and well, shaggy and scooby might be scared of their own shadows so they could be scared as much as often but daphne should at least remember all of the spooky stuff and that's the thing that doesn't make that doesn't work that's what doesn't make it work the whole point of daphne's character in zombie island was that she's trying to find something that's real um daphne if you wanted to find real ghosts the, and if this is in the same universe as 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo, as this is a clear sequel, direct sequel to Curse of the 13th Ghost, then Daphne, all you had to do was go to the Him, 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 Himalayas and find um, Vincent Van Gogh and go on some ghost searchings, because Boogle and Weird are still out there. They're not in the chest of demons. Um, you can always find those guys. You can always talk to some of Vincent's contacts. Vincent knows a little Frankenstein monster creature who owns an inn. Um, there's vampires, there's werewolves, there's all sorts of stuff from the Red Shirt Shaggy era that Vincent Van Gogh probably has contacts in, and, you know, so it's all, it doesn't work. It, 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 Zombie Island and 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo cannot be connected like that. Because these, these two movies, Curse of the 13 Ghost and Return to Zombie Island, they are direct sequels. To, they, 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 they are connected. This is a direct sequel to Curse of the 13 do you see the conspiracy? I would have to make a whole series of videos trying to chronologue the timeline of Scooby-Doo and the movies of Scooby-Doo and try to figure out what's canon to what, what, you know, it might even be a Kingdom Hearts meets Halloween meets something else level of convoluted. And this is supposed to just be Scooby-Doo. <laughs> We're not supposed to do this to this series. But... You make me do it when you make sequels like this. <laughs> I do like it more. No, actually, I might actually like it less than Curse of the 13th Ghost. Though, Curse of the 13th Ghost makes me upset more than Return to Zombie Island. And I think that's more because I don't care about this movie. I care about Curse of the 13th Ghost because I care about Vincent Van Gogh. I care about Flim Flam. I care about the Chest of Demons and the whole storyline like that. I care about a lot of those things and a lot of those subjects far more than the Zombie Island shtick that this movie was trying to play with. So while this movie may not have hit the landing as much as it did, it did not go off consistency kilter as much as Cursed of the Thirteenth Ghost did to the Thirteen Ghosts of Scooby-Doo. If that makes sense. This is 23 minutes long, I don't want to make it 25, so I'm probably going to have to conclude this with saying... Return to Zombie Island is a fine movie. Curse of the Thirteenth Ghosts is a fine movie. Though the things that their sequels to are far superior. Zombie Island is far superior to Return to Zombie Island. The Thirteen Ghosts of Scooby-Doo TV show is far superior to Curse of the Thirteen Ghosts. And the only reason that these two movies should even be watched is because of Fred. <laughs>